day, more than 300 murders and violent attacks take place here. Two officers have been killed, three others have been taken to the hospital. A bloody end to a shootout between cops and robbers. Another man in blue, dead. Today, we usher in a new day. One that represents the end of crime. The end of corruption. neutralized and the start of the rebirth of our city welcome to the world's first robotic police force we interrupt this program to bring you a special report This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello and welcome to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that uh, does something for the greater good for uh, most people. (laughs) What? Uh, If you're going to steal my (laughs) intro, you should at least get it right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you've heard it for 200 episodes and you can't remember <laughs> welcome to the podcast that explores the hollywood film industry for the greater good there you go that's what i was trying to think of <laughs> podcast that does something for uh, somebody it does something. somewhere somewhere yeah, see, somehow I got, yeah. it, I got it close you were close <laughs> yeah just <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, uh, this uh, what is this? Um, <laughs> this is episode two hundred and two, two hundred and two, and tonight we're talking about Jeez. Chappy, Chappy, talking about Chappy, Chappy. Hey, Chappy. podcast about Chappy. I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight Not is Chappy. Andrew, plug and play Jimison. Good day. There you go. Uh, Corny, who will join us in a little bit. Yellow assault rifle Logan. Uh, make snarky comment about said yellow assault rifle. And Sam (laughs) also drops his students off in bad areas to teach them about the real world vector. Teach them a lesson. Yeah, your mom is very And uh, Sean, just so you know, I'm going to create a gigantic robot to uh, rip rip you in half. Okay, cool. You're going to make an Ed 209 to to, to cut me in half? Yeah, a a moose. Except I'm going to call mine uh, an aardvark. (laughs) An aardvark? It's going to have a tough shell, and then it balls up and can roll and crush people. Yeah, that's how it gets places. It rolls. That's a good idea. It's like the Destroyers yeah. in um, Star yeah. Wars. It's BB-8, really, if you think about it. Uh, just a bigger version. Oh, actually, it's mm-hmm. kind of like the robot from The Incredibles. The Incre- there you go, yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. <coughs> By the way, Sam, you're making me a little seasick with your camera. <laughs> seasick? Sorry. I'm... I'm uh... <laughs> In my rocking chair. Well, it's not even just a rocking chair. I felt like because we were going like side to side too. I was going to into the microphone. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Now we're not streaming live tonight, right? No, God, no. Okay, good. No, we just that one episode. If 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 we feel like there's an audience for that kind of a thing, then we'll probably yeah. instead of doing Facebook, we'll probably switch over to Twitch because it'll be prettier. Um, yeah, but yeah, nobody wants to see us. No, they don't. Uh, no one, yeah. They barely want to hear. Yeah, us. No one hardly listens to us as it is anyway. <laughs> let, let alone watch us. Um, but that's all right. Um, so this is the movie. Uh, what is this? This is yeah, 2015's Chappy, um, directed by Neil Blomkamp. 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 That's an M. Uh, if you think he was obviously Bobby, from South Africa, he's clearly from South Africa. Um, he has done such just talk like this all the time. Uh, I, 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 I call actually, everybody Chappy. I, I actually um, went to um, the, the church that I went to in high school where I met our good friend Andrew Lejeune. Um, was it in South Africa? No, but there was a girl that went there. Central? She was from, yeah, Central Africa. She was from South Africa. Oh, okay. Uh, and she had that accent, and she talked like was that. Was she hot? Uh, actually, no, <laughs> she wasn't. She was cute, but I wouldn't say hot. Um, 
it wasn't like did she have bad did she have a bad haircut? I guess that's the big question. No, she didn't have a bad haircut like everyone in this movie did. Everyone in this movie did, like except <laughs> um, what's her name? Uh, the, the only normal female in the movie. Um, oh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, Sigourney Weaver. What's her name? Aliens. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, she was like the only one that had a normal haircut in the entire movie. Um, Probably in the contract that no, no, I'm not shaving my bangs. Right. Yeah, you've done that once. Yeah. I'm not doing it again. So um, weird. But anyway, this guy has done, uh, Neil has done, uh, he's done a bunch of short, uh, short films. His first Maybe real, so was in... um, well, his first real film was District 9. Yes. And. Did we do that for the podcast? No. No. Did I, we well, not? No. No, I don't think so. Did we? I thought we did. Oh, crap. Huh. I don't think so. I I have a very, very vivid memory of only ever seeing that movie one time in the theater and kind of refusing to ever see it again. Really? I liked it. Uh, I liked it too, but it was, again, it was hard watch. Yeah? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just something hard. about it. Other than, well, I'm not going to spoil it. Well, how old is it? 2009. I mean, we're, we're, we're uh, nearing a decade old film. I mean, it doesn't have a real happy ending. No, it doesn't. I don't care about the it's ending. Kind of bleak. I, I like the ending, actually. <laughs> the ending doesn't bother mm-hmm. me. It's one, it's shake camps like crazy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, and that like physically hard to watch that part. Um, the, the main character who was the voice of Chappie in this movie. He Chappie? talks so fast with that his strong accent, it mm-hmm. was hard to understand what he was saying. Um, like the mechanics of the movie were hard for me physically, mm-hmm. um, but like once I watched it and then got to the end, I was like, okay, I'm good. You know, like I I liked it and I thought it was really interesting and very compelling, but I don't kind of ever want to watch it again. Um, mm-hmm. I think it came on like. FX or something one time. So it was obviously very edited and I started watching it and then realized, yeah, I don't want to watch this again. So, um, hmm. he also directed Elysium, which I freaking loved. Um, which one was that one? So that's Tom. Tom no, it's, um, Matt Damon. Cruz. Oh, Matt Damon. Yeah. Matt Damon is your, your, hit, Oh, your, that's right. With the arm or the, like he back. It's problems. a suit. It's a, well, sort of he, the quick plot of that is like, Again, super. It's, we're in the future, and Earth is a shithole, and they built a giant space platform, which is called Elysium, where only the super rich go, and we basically mm-hmm. have the they have the cure for everything on that ship, right? Like mm-hmm. cancer, AIDS, everything, right? They've we've discovered mm-hmm. that, and every day, week, month, year, people attempt to go to Elysium. They steal ships and they fly up there, and they they try to jump into these healing beds. To, to get healed. And Matt Damon, who works in a plant, he's a former con, he works in this whatever plant that makes robots or whatever. Was it radiation poisoning? Yeah, and he gets like a super dose of radiation poisoning, and instead of turning into the giant green Hulk monster, like in other cool movies... Um, he starts he, falling apart. Yeah, he basically, he starts, he's dying. And yeah. the company that did it to him was like, eh, you know, tough cookies, right? So he joins yeah. up with a team to go and crash onto Elysium, and they give him a, like an exo- exoskeleton suit armor thing, and he crashes in. And there's a cool fight between him and again the main hero, main character from this movie, mm-hmm. uh, Char Charlto, whatever his name is. Um, he's the guy that was the helicopter pilot from um, A Team. I'm pilot. Uh, yeah, not not I'm that pilot. guy. <laughs> oh, okay. um, but he does say that actually, kind of in the movie. I think he does say that <laughs> when they're like. We need a pilot. And he's like, I'm an army ranger, sir. I can fly. He's like, oh, okay. Because he has like a weird southern accent in that movie. It's kind of funny. Anyway, point is, is that Elysium was actually really cool. And I, and I actually really liked it a lot, even though some people didn't. I, I thought it was really interesting and compelling. And then he does this movie right after that. And then he does some more short films. And then he does something called Cooking with Bill. And then he does some more short films. And then that's it. I mean, that's all he's done. So literally the only three feature films he's done are District 9, Elysium, and Chappie. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's directing something called Untitled Neil Blancamp Alien Project. which I'm of course, Maybe it's a pro- sequel to District 9. Well, it's, it's got Sigourney Weaver in it. 
Yeah, he landed. I'm, I'm surprised he landed Sigourney Weaver. That's actually pretty impressive. Well, the fact that she's in it tells me one of two things. Actually, it tells me many things. One, he likes Sigourney Weaver. So that means that it could be a sequel to Chappie. Yeah. Which I don't think it's going to be. It could be a sequel to District 9, or it could just be another alien movie. Mm-hmm. You know, that... that well, I wonder if it... You oh, know what? I think I've heard his name tossed around for another alien Yeah, maybe movie. that's what it is. An actual alien movie. Yeah. Ooh, and the way I like his design. Mm, interesting. Well, they've, they've got somebody called Michael Bean. Bean? Bean? Michael B-E-I-H-N. Isn't he the one that dies and everything? He died... No, that's Sean Bean. Sean he Bean. was in... Okay. Um, he was Kyle Reese in the Terminator movie. Um, mm. And he was Corporal Hicks in Aliens. And in this movie... He's rumored to be in as Corporal Dwayne Hicks. So, yeah, it's another Aliens movie. Ooh. Huh. So, Gordy Weaver needs mm. to start getting in shape. Yeah, I'd say. Um, I'm not saying that she's unattractive or out of shape. She's just old. I mean, I'm not being mean. She's... Well, it's, it's kind of like the last Indiana Jones movie. The story was, was pretty much crap, but... It, he Jesus. couldn't fulfill the Indiana Jones we grew up with. Does that make sense? Well, he, he looked old and yeah, it looked okay. hard for him to get around. He was grumpy, old man. I, I don't want to turn this particular episode into a bash you know, the Crystal Skull, which we could easily do. But <laughs> I, I think of all the bad in that film, I think Tom, not Tom, Harrison Ford's part was probably the least bad. Uh, yeah. You know, like, and he was totally mm-hmm. phoning it in. Like, he didn't care. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, you could tell, like, some of his delivery was just bad. Right? But I don't think he was the problem. I think everything else was the problem. Entirely. From the part where they nuked the fridge on, which is where we get the phrase nu- nuking the fridge. Mm-hmm. Oh. I explained that to somebody recently, and they're like, I've heard that phrase before, but I didn't know what it was from. I'm like, yeah, it's from that shit film. So anyway, uh, but what we haven't talked about much yet is Chappie. Um, and Andrew, Chappie? if you will uh, tell us, what is Chappie? Chappie? All right. In the year 2035, where robots are everyday objects and are programmed to live alongside humans, Wait, what? Detective Dale Spooner is called out to investigate the apparent <laughs> suicide of the scientists behind these robots. <laughs> okay. Right, Libby? So... I knew you were in the wrong page <laughs> when you said 2035 because in the trivia it says this movie is 2016. I know. So that was <laughs> iRobot. Really iRobot. Yeah. Um, which I would actually like to do for this podcast because I love iRobot. See it? And I wasn't a big fan. Oh, I thought that movie was great. Okay, so Chappie. Chappie. In the near future, crime is patrolled by a mecha- mechanized police force. When one police droid, Chappie, is stolen and given new, given new programming, he becomes the first robot with the ability to think and feel for himself. And feel. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what this movie is about. It's about it's AI, it's AI, right? They, it's AI, yeah. This guy at home with his little talking Roomba uh, overnight with, a, with about six cans of Red Bull discovers AI, just invents AI. <laughs> On his Sony Vio computer, and uh, I, still, I don't know. Okay, I wish Corny was here yet. He'll be here in a minute. That, yeah. that, I don't know why it bothers me, but it does. And I don't know why, it just does. But Sony makes a movie, right? Sony Columbia Pictures, which is owned by Sony, they make a movie. That means everybody everywhere has to use damn Sony products. Everything is a Sony product. To the TV. Or, for- or whatever they used, and yeah. Yeah, so like he's using a Sony Bio, right? Do they still make those? I guess. I don't know. I've not seen one in years. Um, and now everyone's using the Sony Ericsson, um, you know, smartphones. I don't know why that bothers me. It just does. I mean, I guess if Apple made a movie. You know, I, but, the th- until you just no- mentioned that, I did not notice. Well, and I noticed it like the first time I really noticed it was in The Amazing Spider-Man when they did the reboot with uh, Andrew Garfield. And he's using Bing on his mm-hmm. Sony Bio desktop. I'm like, okay. Uh, all right, so Who uses here. Bing? I know, exactly right. It's like, okay, wait a minute. Peter Parker, one of the smartest people in the MCU, is using Bing? Like, I just lost respect points for you. So, 
Anyway. Um, well, they do the same thing with cars, though. I mean, there's usually like one car manufacturer that will sponsor a movie or, or whatever. And no, so you, all you see is Dodge in the movie or Toyota. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that. Like, the Avengers movies are always, for whatever reason, they cut a deal that they're accurate, right? I mean, like, and they and it's so obvious to the point that, like, when they're getting ready to fight the Battle of New York and they land the Quinjet, they have to run in front of a very well-placed, perfectly conditioned 2012 Acura something, right? Like, I'm, I'm okay with that because Acura didn't make the movie, you know, like I'm good with product. Oop, I just did something. What did I just do? I'm good. Okay, I, I'm okay with product placement, right? You drink your Coke, you hold the Coke can to the to the camera. <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with people saying, "Hey, can I use your iPhone?" Right? You know, or let me see your Samsung tablet. Like I'm I'm okay with it. I just for whatever reason, because Sony made the movie, everything in the movie is Sony. Mm. I don't, again, there's, I, I have no reason for that to bother me except that it does. I don't know why. It's my, it's my own issue. I'm, I'm good with it. Would it bother you if, if Chappie had a Sony, uh, oh, that would piss me off. Stamp on yeah. The back? That would actually really bother me. <laughs> if, if, like, <laughs> how awesome would that be, though? Even if they just put it tiny, tiny, you know, it, it was a hidden Easter egg. Right. You know, like property a, of Sony or, right, yeah. Yeah. Like, or like his view screen was a, was a Sony, like, TV kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I like Sony. There's nothing wrong with Sony. I used to have a Sony TV before I bought my Samsung. So, like, I, I again, I'm okay with product placement. I just don't know why it bothers me. I need to get over it. Anyway, yeah, you know, I guess it didn't bother me. It's it's those movies that make the product placement overly um, in your face. Transformers does that a lot. Um, you know, some of those just very obvious corporate sponsors just kind yeah. of upset me. No, you're not wrong. Again, I, uh, yeah, you're you're not wrong. Barbasol in Jurassic Park. I mean, come on. Uh, but that's but that's like, I don't know because they never say it though, right? It's never like no, no, no. Take this Barbasol shaving cream. It smooths and refreshes your face while hiding dinosaur embryos. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would have been the Truman Show, like the commercial, right? Um, and like and like. <laughs> Uh, what does he say? Not Watson. What's the guy? We have Watson. We got Watson here. Who's the guy? Dennis Needry? Yeah, yeah. But who's the guy? He's saying to, right? He's like, don't use Watson. my name. Is it? Is it Watson? Yeah. He's like, no, Dodson. Right? It's Dodson. That's what. Dodson. That's right. Yeah. Dodson. Dodson. We've got Dodson here. See, no one cares. Like if Dodson looks at the camera and says, "Take this Barbershaw shaving cream," and. Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't know. Again, I'm, it's, it's a, it's a total uh, silly. It's dumb. It's a dumb thing. And it's just my thing. And it's, I'll, I'll get over it. It's fine. At the end, the movie, th this movie, I'm sort of stalling again, waiting for corny, but, um, this movie's issues were, were greater in number than that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Um, so, but anyway, that's fine. Um, I said we jump into it. Yeah, so so Andrew, I guess I'll let you. So this was the first time viewing for all of us, correct? Yes. Okay, and I think you guys were in perfect timing with that. By the way, I, I should I should cap that out. Um, <laughs> we planned ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same for Corny too. I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. So you Andrew, might why like you... uh, movies like Chuppy, Chuppy. Um. I mean, if we were to order the three films that the, the director has done, I would actually put this third, in my opinion. But that's we'll get to my full review in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, okay, okay. Because, again, he's only done three films, but I would definitely yeah. put... In my opinion, it's Elysium, District 9, Chappie. Flip the first two, and I'm okay. Right, but you haven't seen Elysium yet, have you? Yeah. Oh, you saw? You did see it? Andrew, yeah, had you Matt seen... Damon. Yeah. I have not. I haven't seen either one of those. Oh, okay. Um... I saw actually I saw both of them in the theater. Um, District Nine looked really interesting, but District Nine came out in two thousand nine. It was a, a time when my wife and I and our good friend Catherine, who does the voice intro for the podcast, uh, and her husband Billy, the two of them we didn't have kids yet, really? so, so the two of them would the girls would go oh, watch 
a chick thing, and then Billy and I would go watch a, a action thing. And this was on the list one night, so we're like, well, we'll go watch this violent thing. And we both really kind of enjoyed it. Um, but again, I, I liked Elysium better, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Andrew, if you get the opportunity to watch either one of them, I would suggest that you do it. Just make sure the kids are asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because like this one, it's them violent movies. With, with well, the, and it's like with the swears. The, so. Well, and I was going to mention this in my review. It's the unexpected violence. Yeah, it's just like holy crap! Did that just happen? Type but, of violence. But you and I both knew it was coming because we watched District Nine. It's the same thing yeah. in District Nine. The movie's just going yeah. along as a pretty normal genre, uh, like a drama with some science fiction, and all of a sudden turned into a flipping war movie. Mm-hmm. Which this movie does the same thing, right? Like mm-hmm. it follows that same same mo. Yep. Right. Uh-huh. And and literally, District Nine in this movie, the only difference is is who's driving the mech, right? Like <laughs> yeah. I don't want to really spoil anything, but there's a mech suit in District Nine. It's just it's a different. And it's amazing. Oh man. Oh, I want one so bad. <laughs> that scene is Andrew. Do you remember the uh, the mech suit from Aliens, the second movie? Yeah. Okay, imagine that, but as a weapons platform, as opposed oh. to like a loader and lifter, right? Like, uh-huh. actually, it's, 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 it's pretty... closer to more of like the Ed 209 that you sit in. Yeah. yeah. And huh. that thing was gnarly and was. <laughs> uh, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you should. If you get the opportunity to, I, I, I think you should. Um, and I'm, I think I've successfully stalled enough. Corny, are you there, sir? You're muted, but I see your icon. Maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hey, buddy. Here. Yay, there he is. Another successful hey, long Corny. day. So what? So that I'm sure you've had another successful long day of uh, playing drums with dildos. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. In, inside joke, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for that. I would hope so. That was, uh, I, did, I, I sent Corny a funny video of, I how you word that, Sean. of somebody using um, <laughs> dildos to play the drum set to Inner Sandman. By I don't Metallica. think we should say that dildos are an inside joke. Just oh, so you... oh, yeah. Sam, sorry. Yeah, well, back it Well, I, I can't think. I'm, I'm, I'm... Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm just tired. I'll give you a second. No, yeah, drink your, <laughs> drink your Red Bull, uh, invent AI, <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll get to it, okay? You know, that seems like that's counterproductive. Like, AI, I'm uh, uh, sorry, Red Bull makes you jumpy. So I don't know if I want to be doing coding uh, <laughs> because that's that's millions of lines uh, of text and, you know, getting a little, little happy with the P's. Uh, right. Make, uh, <laughs> Maybe that's... <laughs> make uh, consciousness uh, transfer not work. Right. Oh, uh, speaking of District 9, I, uh, I've always heard that District 9 might have been a... Uh, like scrap project of a Halo movie. Really? Yeah, because if you look at the planes that they use in District Nine, they're really similar to the uh, uh, the Pelicans they use in Halo. Well, really similar. It's funny you um, should say that, Corny, because in the films, the movies that he's directed, the Neil uh, guy, our director, uh, no, uh, mm-hmm. Blomkamp, he Blomkamp. Directed something called, if I can find it, Halo Landfall. He did a, a short film. Uh, to provide some context, this short was filmed as camera tests uh, when he was trying to do a Halo movie, uh, but it, it didn't turn out into a movie, but they did a bunch of camera tests for it. So it, it's probably not that... Interesting. That far oh. of a leap there, Corny, to say that that was probably... Ships that he had maybe CGI'd up for that, for for that, and was like for Halo, and was like, well, we already got them rendered. We might as well just use them. I tell you, for a while there, I had this on our list, but there is a Halo short um, out there oh, wow. um, that stars one of the girls from uh, *Mind the Witch in the Wardrobe*, mm-hmm. and it's actually pretty darn good. Interesting. And if we ever get a chance, it's like uh, it's a Halo. It's not forward under dawn, but there's there's a Halo movie out there, a live action Halo movie. Interesting. District Nine is streaming, by the way, on FX now, so it means it's going to be edited for TV. Boo. Gross. No, no. Uh, but it's on. No, you no. want the real thing. It's also on Stars, which will be the normal thing, but I don't think any of us have access to that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So if it ever jumps to the to the big two, Amazon or um, Netflix will do it. Um, because I actually kind of want to see it again. I guess. I guess. Really? I thought you said you didn't want to see it. Yeah, but maybe I'll do it for the movie for the show. I mean, I've watched a lot of bad for the movie for the show. <laughs> I could watch a good movie again, you know, for uh, for the show. So we, Courtney, just to kind of catch up, we're about to do Andrew. Why don't you give us your kind of initial thoughts on the movie Chappie? Chappie. Okay. Well, I didn't know what to expect going into this, and and uh, it wasn't uh, extremely terrible. <laughs> Sorry, my dishwasher. What is it? Weird noises. <laughs> Uh, There's always it's weird noises know, from your I'm house. It's great. <laughs> open it and take the dishes out. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know what to expect, and I, I'd seen the the uh, kind of advertisement for it on uh, Netflix a few times, and I thought, well, maybe I should watch it and just kind of see what it's all about. But I never got around to it, so this gave me the opportunity. Yeah, the movie itself, uh, you know, as I don't know, as an action fan, there was plenty of that in there lots of shooting and blowing stuff up uh which is nice i guess but (laughs) (laughs) it it, you know it soothes that part of my brain that wants that kind of stuff in a movie but i felt like there were some some opportunities that may have been missed in the movie you know there we kind of talked about it before we started recording about uh the soul of of a robot, or the uh, uh, the or person, yeah, yeah. So uh, I feel like there were some really unexplored avenues that they could have taken um, and made it a little more interesting of film, and maybe taken out some of the shooting and blowing stuff up. Uh, I I don't know. I, there were a few scenes that I felt like could have been left out altogether. Uh, some of the office stuff and some of the banter between Hugh Jackman and the uh, uh, Patel. IT guy. Yeah. Some dog millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, there were just some things I felt like weren't needed. Um, and then there were some parts that I feel I wish they would just have explored. So. Okay. All right. Corny? Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I really wanted to see Chappie. Actually, I almost saw it in theaters, but never just had time to go and do it. Um, I was really excited to watch this movie. And uh, as it played out, I immediately started to get that, that feeling that what I was expecting was not going to be met. And, uh, and for the most part, that kind of happened. Uh, but the movie did turn into an interesting concept of nature versus nurture. Obviously, that's what this film was about. Um, but I did have several problems. Um, like uh, how the movie ended. Uh, it, it, sorry, the, the race towards the ending. Uh, there's so many things that could have been done different. Uh, uh, Dion could have figured out a way to uh, have, have turned uh, uh, Chappie into a killing machine and saved himself. Um, I wanted Chappie to go on a rampage. <laughs> uh, it was I think we all wanted uh, Chappie to go on a rampage. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, uh, but it's kind of one of the things, actually, I, one of the biggest problems I have with this movie is that who was the most violent group of people you saw? Like, actually violent in terms of uh, uh, being relentless towards their enemy. The it was drug dealers? One, one group of black kids who uh, beat Chappie. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was it. And so, in this entire movie, you have people who were shooting people, but you never really, like, saw that. Um, but the, this, the most violent thing I saw was a group of black youth beating the shit out of Chappie. Yeah, oh, one of them threw a I Molotov like, cocktail really, on him. I, I know. I was just like, out of all of this, really? But uh, no, I'm just I mean, I'm just kind of picking around with that. Um, it's just one of those. Uh, I I enjoyed what came out of the movie, but um, just like everything else, I think there's some things that, that could have changed. 
Um, more death from Chappie would have been nice. Uh, I would have appreciated that. More explosions would have been nice. <laughs> so, so what I'm hearing from so far, the two of you, is that uh, from Corny and Sam, Andrew not so much, is that you wanted a Iron Giant moment when Chappie thinks that maybe the maker is dead or when Mama dies and it's just like loses his shit and overrides his moral code and says, it's time to go to work because I can. And uh, I think in, in, I, in, I want it for different purposes. I want the moment where you lied to me, I'm going to die and everybody else has treated him poorly. And that's when he goes, Oh, you wanted like you, legit, like you wanted him sucks. To, like turn into I'm kind of a bad all. guy almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, I, I think he earned it by that point in terms of, I, I would have been just fine if he would have gone on some sort of spree. Um, and, and that sounds horrible, but um, I think he earned it with all the crap that he went through. Yeah. Because we've got the idea that Chappie is being taught like a baby or a dog. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. They kind of go in between the two. At first he's a baby, then he's a dog. Like, yeah, Chappie wants to go, you know, that kind of thing. Like, right, right, you know, yeah. if your dog could talk, it'd be like, uh, Molly, Molly wants to go outside. Well, it was to work. <laughs> right. Like, that's the kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, at some point in time, even if you never teach a dog to bite you, you push it enough, it's going, I know, that's the instinct of the dog. But if you push anyone enough, they're going to snap. And, yeah. uh, and I think, I think the AI had too much patience. Yeah, interesting. To be as smart as it was, I think it had too much patience to have not snapped and killed someone right. sooner. Or, mm-hmm. or realize its kind of strength that it had. You know, I mean, he didn't mm-hmm. quite realize how powerful he was until he started throwing ninja stars at stuff, right? I think. I mean, it was, you know. He, you go to sleep now. Yeah, you go to sleep. You go to sleep now, yeah. So, <laughs> and there's a there's a, certainly an innocence there, right? Where you're, you kind of feel mm-hmm. bad for Chappie because it's like, did he kill those cops? We're not sure. I mean, I know one of them didn't die. Um, mm-hmm. or not the cop, but the security guy. Um, and he's like, you were supposed to go to sleep. And then he saw that he was bleeding and that he was in pain. And he was like, you, you were supposed to go to sleep. So like there's, you know, the movie certainly deals with a lot of kind of the, you know, the innocence of a child, um, kind of a thing there. It's, it's not quite of mice and men. I, I remember Lenny's name. I don't ever remember the big guy's name. But George? No. George. Is it yeah, Lenny was George. the big guy. George oh, Lenny's the, the big guy. George is the little guy. Yeah, you're right. Come on, George. We're gonna go to the. You know, yeah, you're right. Stupid effing book. Um. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That book will make you. That'll mess you oh. up. Uh, that's yeah, and that's that page. Um. Well, I'm not gonna ruin the book, but you know, you just. <laughs> it's a hundred year old book. I think we're good. I know, but it's like I'm. <laughs> I'm always. I think we need to justify this. So, because books are so. We have the three-year rule. Obviously, this book is no. I know. I, I no. T- I'm, I'm making the joke. No, Sam's right because it's a it's a classic. It's a literary classic, and it might be unfair to someone who's listening who is yeah. young enough to have not had that book as required reading yet. Yep. Ah, and and I don't point. want to ruin that it's moment. So for good. Them. Yeah. It's it, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's worth the read, and it'll rip your soul out. But yep. that's the point of all of those depression era books. <laughs> Is to rip, it would your, rip soul your soul out. out if we had one. Oh yeah, <laughs> well then you can p- upload it onto a USB drive. Yeah. Um, By the way, um, as silly as that sounds, I appreciate the way they approach that, which is, it's just data and energy. Right. And yeah, data numbers. I'm like okay, that's cool. I'm good with that. Yeah, I liked also that he took like nine um, PS4s and turned them into a CPU. Um, <laughs> I'm totally cool with that. I mean, you could do that. I mean, they're, they're that's that's still, actually been overheated. done by our government before. Yeah. What were you saying, Sam? I said, and it's still overheated. Yeah. Had all those fans. Well, again, they're probably not used to having to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but that, I mean, the, the tech in this movie really didn't bother me. I mean, I, I joke about putting someone's quote unquote soul or essence consciousness onto a flash drive and we were kind of making er- fun earlier of like I hope that's a big flash drive like like how much <laughs> like how much data is a person's 
consciousness, right? You know, it's like. Oh, at this point in time in my life, about 32 gigs. I mean, well, I would, <laughs> but you got to wonder, like. Terabyte? I wonder, I, yeah, I mean, like, there's. You, a, a I don't have that much information. I live to eat and drink and right, shit you, from but, time to time. Yeah, but Corny, you're 35 years old. You've got 35 years of learning, of eating and shitting and music and how to how to that. play trombone. Like you think and, that. That's the thing. I just, when I'm not talking, I'm just staring off into the wall. Yeah, drooling. but I mean. Well, I, w- I was in a meeting the other day at, at work and someone, we were in the library and somebody mentioned that building a house and being a contractor is like, take, like, being able to use every single book in this library to complete a project. You know, you need to know that many different things to do a complicated thing like build a house. Right. And that's just building a house. You know, you've got all this other data, you know, when to, you know, what's the best gun on battlefield one, you know, what's a rocket launcher. How do you, uh, do you play body bags on, on halo uh, three rocket launcher? (laughs) Keep going. I like this. The best gun on uh, Goldeneye. Rocket launcher? No, not the rocket launcher. It's the golden gun. Everybody knows that. <laughs> you shut your face. <laughs> There's a reason why people, like, we, we, in order to save relationships, we banned the golden gun in that game. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one shot, one kill. Didn't yeah. I? God, it was so frustrating. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, I think there'd be, have to be a lot of data that we just, I mean, you could think of the most random thing right now. And just think of all the, the stacks of files in your brain it has to get to no kidding. to get to that one thing. I mean, we've watched 200 movies, right? Yeah. I mean, if you, if, you, if you even quantify it that way, a movie on a DVD, so we're using standard def. We remember in standard def, that's four gigs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> four gigs times 200 is whatever yeah. that math is. Uh, it's, I can't even do that. Uh, it's 800 right, gigs, right? right. <laughs> Almost a terabyte. We're heading towards a terabyte. Right. Yeah. And that's just, and that's from, just movies. That's just from this dumb podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I like, kind of want my life back. Right. Like, I'm, I, like, like college. A college, terabyte of my life is gone because of this? Right. Like, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. bullshit. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> my plan is working. Muhaha. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to fill your brain with useless stuff. I mean, That's I don't know. I, I, I like the idea. I don't. There's probably no quantifiable way to ever to figure out how much a person can remember and turn oh, that we into. Got a, we got a great opportunity though. Data. Stephen Hawking died. So <laughs> can we just download He's part him? Of machine, right? Yeah. Well, can we just plug him in, right? And yeah. uh, is it too soon? Is it da- too soon? Download. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. As your as as this podcast is being aired, he will have died a few about yeah, five. His body's not cold yet. Four days ago. Well, not to oh, us, sure. but by the time it's cold. Oh. Um, small. Was it four eat. days ago? No, it was. was it, it was. Yes, it was. It was last night. Yeah. Um, but this, I won't post this for another <laughs> three or four days. Oh, oh I, won't, right. I don't okay. usually post right, until Friday or Saturday. Time travel. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, um, let me see what the stocks did. Right. Uh, wait. You know, it's like, <laughs> um, you know. If, when we recorded, like, before the Oscars, it's like, congratulations to insert winner here. You know, cause. Isn't that what the Simpsons do? Don't they, like, always put something in front of their face when they're saying, congratulations to Super Bowl 50 winners? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. by the time they animated it, they didn't know who it was. Um, anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam, I guess it's your yeah. turn, right? I think oh. we're, we're still there. Sure. We're 45 let minutes. Me in a, the- <laughs> let me take a different angle on this. Okay, um, please. I, you know, I, I'm a child of the '80s and the uh, the old uh, short you're circuit. You're um, you know, I'm thinking. Uh, it, well, even Iron Giant wasn't. Was it the '80s and Iron Giant or the '90s? That was '90s. '90s, right? But uh, Homeward Bound, sure. Um, where the Red Fern Grows, um, Old Yeller. If you get where I'm going. It these movies always in my mind seem to follow a a linear story in which the poor innocent person thing dog robot um, <laughs> ends up finding life and then at the very end what happens they shoot the dog behind the barn <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, well, short circuit doesn't get shot, but okay. <laughs> but in this, every single short circuit movie, he he always quote unquote dies. Uh-huh. 
you know, and, and you're like, oh, stupid robot just died, you know, and, and those stupid movies always had this effect on me where I refuse to go see a movie about a dog. I will not go see um, Marley, Marley and, me, and Me, yeah, right, and some of these other stupid things because I know exactly what will happen. And um, it's like, oh, uh, so anyway, um, I thought this is where that movie was heading. And I was pretty certain this is where this movie was headed. So I was actually pleasantly surprised that it didn't go there. Right. Um, it kind of turned that trope a little bit around where um, it uh, kind of, uh, I found an interesting way out for it. And it fit in this movie. Yeah. It fit. Um, I really, really like Blomkamp's style. Um, I like the way things look. I like the way he deals with technology and how uh, his ideas are put forth. Elysium has the really interesting, um, you know, exoskeleton. District 9 has yeah. all the weapons. And, this one had the robots. And the one thing to to add to that, Sam, it's like all the technology is like kind of clunky and... And like, like you know, like feasible. Like it kind of say. like it's like Star Wars four, five, and six. You know, it's like yeah, like the Millennium Falcon is not a smooth, shiny piece of whatever. It's like dirty and weird, and there's holes and stuff. You know, and you know, and then like, <laughs> like one, two, and three ruined yeah. it all with their sleek metal. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. What'd you say? <laughs> like my underwear. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, but, but I love that style and and. I worry that he's focusing a little bit too much on this really big um, gap between the haves and the have-nots. You know, you see that in District 9, you see that in Elysium, and you're, you see this in this movie as well in terms of, you know, the corporate clean um, haves and the drug-dealing, um, gun-toting people as the have-nots. And maybe that's just a South African thing. I don't know. Uh, maybe they could have put this in Detroit and they could have called it RoboCop. Right. I don't know. Um, but uh, I I enjoyed the movie. I think I would have enjoyed it more if it was muted and had uh, subtitles. <laughs> I right. think – I really do because what the, annoyed me – Annoying as shit. Yes. The, 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 the thing that annoyed me most about this movie was their voices. Yeah. The and time. it wasn't what they were saying. It was – How they said it. How they said it. And – I felt no sympathy for the idiot drug dealers. Um, maybe a little bit. What was his name? America. Yeah. Right. When he got pulled in half, I was like, "Oh, he that he didn't deserve that." Um, but like the girl, I could. She had no brain or something. Was she drug? Did that to her brain? Um, and of course, the uh, daddy. Um, I. Uh, I just. I had a really hard time with all the focus on those characters in this movie, it was a two hour movie. I think they could have cut at least 20 minutes off yeah. and still been just as good, if not better by not focusing so much on them. I really did like, um, Slumdog Millionaire. I really liked, uh, Hugh Grant and I liked, um, <laughs> the, and I liked the robots. I wanted to see more with Chappie. Um, the way he moved was amazing. The way he looked was amazing. And and I think they, they lost potential because of these idiots, um, the drug dealers. John? Oh, okay. No, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm kind of tracking You're with processing? you. Processing? Yeah. No, I'm just tracking with you. Like, I, I'm, I'm trying to think also. So, so yeah, so you, the three main drug dealers who we meet at the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. um, who are indebted to someone called hippo mm -hmm. who doesn't wear a shirt. Um, but most men in this movie don't wear shirts for if, some reason. If I had uh, abs like that, I don't think I'd wear a shirt. Yeah, that's true. I'd be teaching in front of my class with, uh, <laughs> you know, my, my <laughs> don't suit, works that way. suit coat open. Yeah. And not because it, you know, the buttons have popped off and, you know, anyway, uh, I'm a little disturbed. <laughs> Andrew, by what's happening right now. It's less of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said you wanted to see more of the robot. I, I did actually. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. um, I appreciate that. It's less that they're in shape and more that they are. They look malnourished. Yeah. Uh, well, know, yeah. They, the, the the other yeah our coked out friends did. So Ninja, yeah, Daddy, uh, Mommy, and America. The white rabbit folks from uh, Matrix. Oh no, kidding! That's actually an yeah. interesting point. 
like her voice annoyed me whenever she spoke. I, I, I she yes. kind of drove me crazy. I didn't like like, and here's my here's kind of the problem. At least I think there's there's no one in this movie that's relatable. No, like yeah. now again, I'm you know middle class. But are you supposed to not relate to him and relate to Chappie? Well, and I get like the Chappie part where I can I can, but I can't really relate to him because I'm a 35 year old dude. Like maybe Declan <laughs> would relate to him because he's five. You know what I'm saying? Like. He, you know, he, he goes through this, this, the, the infancy stage and then on up and you, I, I feel sympathy for him up until mm-hmm. the very last minute, well, last scene of the movie, you know, once he starts to figure things out, but for the first, you know, three fourths of the movies, I feel nothing but sympathy for him because, you know, there, it's essentially child abuse. I mean, even Dave Patel mm-hmm. says it like, I'm going to call the cops and report you for abuse. And they're like. You stole a robot. Like, you can't <laughs> call the cops. Um, but I, I didn't really care that any of them died. Um, I wonder if when Daddy tries to make the sacrifice play, if he's if that's like the redemption moment, which was weird. Like I didn't expect him to do that, right? Yeah. Um, like maybe for her, but not for the group. Like, cause mm-hmm. he did it for Patel and Chappie. Like he was doing it for Chappie, and it's like, am I supposed to feel something for him right now? And then when she pulls out that that armor piercing, you know, gun thingy, whatever, and uh, hits Ed two hundred nine in the face, and then she gets hers, and then shot me in the face. And then Chappie goes goes, you know, you know, gets really upset. Then you know. I felt something, but again, I didn't feel bad for her. I felt bad for Chappie because he's lost truly the only one of the only two people on this earth. And again, his existence is five days long. That's actually genuinely cared for him, her Mm -hmm. and Dave Patel, because daddy only wants to use him as a weapon. And it's not until the end where he kind of has a moral compass. That points north. Right, or towards cash or drugs or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, like Goku, you know, just... Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So anyway, I don't know. Well, and, I, and you talk about the moose, right? The What was it, Ed 2.0? Ed right? 209 what? is what it is in RoboCop. Yeah. That's what we keep calling After it. seeing his per- previous movie, District 9, and the lookalike in that, I was a little disappointed in uh, what this thing could do. Well, yeah. it... It's right, a, but the difference is, is that that one in District Nine is alien. <laughs> it's alien technology. This is not. So I mean, I wanted to see some lasers blow up. Yeah, some people. It, that's why it couldn't because it was an alien. <laughs> um, I thought it was cool and terrifying and cumbersome and strange. And why in the hell you would ever put those in the streets? Um, but it's the same argument they had with the Ed 209. I mean, mm-hmm. it looks like, and, and when you flip it upside down, it squeals <laughs> like a pig for some reason. Um, but there was a lot of RoboCop in this movie. There was. Oh, yeah. he, he, I mean, it's the, you know, this model doesn't work and mm-hmm. it's defective. Probably, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. If I'm a <laughs> worker firm, this guy's been trying to push his giant thing onto the streets and all of a sudden one day all of my damn robot uh, cops go dead i'm looking at him Mm -hmm. especially as much as he was pushing his giant yeah and uh, did anybody else feel like the turn for him was really sudden and really Really abrupt i actually actually no and that's because and i wrote this in my notes when He's in the meeting, and I captured this, with the meeting with the donut-eating cops, right? Could that have been more of a trope? No. Um, the donut-eating cops. And the cop literally says, it, 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 it has to get worse before we would use something like, like way worse, right? And then, like, the next scene is him, like, in the bathroom, staring at the mirror, and then he kind of has this look, and I'm like, in that moment... I'm like, oh my god, that's what's going to happen in this movie. He's going to do something to make the scenario so bad they're going to have to use him. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I knew that at minute. Uh, I think I just missed that scene. Thirty nine. He went into the bathroom and had like a little <laughs> moment, whatever. But like that was the moment. I'm like, I, I wrote but it in my notes. Don't follow men into the bathroom. Well, yeah. Well, the camera did, so I can't help it. Um, 
That's not how that works. <laughs> Whatever. Excuse me, ma'am. I uh, thought I'd go in the bathroom. My camera went, and then I I've got, a, I've got a camera in my hand here, ma'am. That's that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, this just got real bad real quick. <laughs> Talk about that's great. Anthony Weiner, is it? Uh, Sean wants to go. Sean wants to go. <laughs> Sean is is f mother. Oh yeah, I, I did like it. Him, we kept saying that backwards. Boy, um, you stop cussing. Because you're not good at it. <laughs> yeah, there's our second iRobot reference. Uh, Corny, you missed it when Andrew did the intro. He actually read the, the, the synopsis well, I, to iRobot. You know, I was, I was hoping that uh, if I had been here for that, that would have happened. Oh, by the but, way, your middle name uh, was uh, Yellow Machine Gun Logan. So. Oh, that's... We all live in a yellow, yellow machine, machine gun. gun. Right. <laughs> not, not quite the same. There was no food in this movie other than the donut eating cops, so I guess I could have made that kind of a reference. But yeah. Shauna, you let me down. I'm sorry. Um, I'll do better. Shauna, you don't embarrass me in front of the Piggly Weekly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> inside jokes on the podcast are great. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know what we were talking about, but um, oh, you guys well, were talking about his the his, ideas they left on the table in this movie. I'm kind of glad they did. Because it's kind of like the spinning top in Inception, where it leaves room for conversation in terms yeah. of. You oh, know, yeah, I don't need complete resolution. He did the same thing in yeah. Elysium and in District 9. And District 9, yeah. Yeah. Especially District 9. Yeah, District 9, the, the, again, the ending is very open ended and very kind of bleak. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have to go a little bit in your own mind on faith that Christopher isn't a dick. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That'll make sense yeah. later on, Andrew, when you watch the movie. So, uh, the, the, the other thing I kept finding strange was this. So, they work for a weapons manufacturing company, right? And mm -hmm. Dave Patel, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, Dion is his real name, right? I think Dion. Devin, Dion, whatever. Dion Sanders. Dion, yes. He, he, um, he invents, the, he basically invents the robot that would be that's the scout robot, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have. Why do I have a feeling that the guy who invented the greatest robotic achievement in the yeah. history of mankind would would not still be in a cubicle in the middle of the room? Like that dude should have his own office on the top of the building. Like, yeah. Why is he? It just doesn't make any well, sense. He should have his own building with research labs and like there's no way he should be in a cubicle. Yeah, like either that or his his contract there at that company is the worst contract ever signed, or maybe that's just the way we Americans think and that's not how South Africans are. I don't know. But she's the CEO of the company. Fine. But that is your head technician, and he's at some shit desk where <laughs> where a pissed off Dude with a sidearm on his on his hip can just come up and threaten him. That was that made no sense. It should have been in an office. He should have been. He should have had an office. Anyway, actually, now that I think about it, um, it uh, reminds me of uh, my friend. Uh, he's now working for uh, Toyota and uh, in Lincolnton or something like that. Uh, out of doing IT support there. And even though he's a supervisor, I think he sits on the floor with everybody else. So it might just be. Did he invent the Toyota? Uh, okay, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it could he, be, I mean, he could be a supervisor, he, and he just has to be. But, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So he's <laughs> okay, like, because he's not the boss, right? the The guy that invented the Dorito doesn't sit on the floor with the rest of the accountants. You know what I'm, you know what I'm like, <laughs> he he invented like uh, like what he invented is is so far past the next level is like. Like he was living in a shit home. I mean, I'm sorry, it was a small house, right? For yeah. for this for this company that would I would assume. I mean, okay, maybe they've only sold robots to Johannesburg, right? Maybe they're they're mm -hmm. starting up, right? They've only they just sold like their first hundred, and they're getting ready to sell another hundred. So they're still new. So I'm fine with the fact that he's not a billionaire yet, right? But. Like I kind of see him as like like an iRobot where they had the big tower and Bruce Greenwood's at the top. Fine, Sigourney Weaver is Bruce Greenwood, 
And the doctor lady person in iRobot is Dave Patel, but she like had her own office and a nice house, and like it just seemed very weird to me. That's all. Yeah. Well, put this put this in the real world. You've got a genius in South Africa that's just made these robots. How soon would Apple be calling or Google How's or or Google the U.S. Or military or, or the DARP, DARPA? You know, how quickly would he get snatched up and oh, yeah. paid millions and millions oh. and millions yeah. of dollars to, yeah. <laughs> to provide that technology for another country? Yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't have the security clearance to use the guard chip for more than 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. hey, right. Like, and yeah, you're right, Sam. If the moment he invented the first one and, and, it, yeah. and proved that it worked... He wouldn't be there anymore in the real world. You're right. He wouldn't be anymore there anymore. Like every major Japanese, Chinese governments would be knocking on his yeah. door saying, name your price. Do you want yeah. Staten and Island? Then, Fine. You know, like, and this is, I guess this is a whole nother movie. And then if a government thought he was going to say the Russians thought the, the United States was going to get him, what would they do? Oh, they would send assassins. They that's, kill him. That's what we yeah. do, right? Like, oh, you yeah. know. Like, we weren't made a better movie. I think we did. I think that actually would be a really cool movie is to watch, like, the spy network try to, like, infiltrate. And, like, he makes a deal with the Americans because it's obviously going to have to be an American-made movie. He makes a deal with America. Yeah. And so we have to send, like, our best agents in to protect him and get him out to oh, back but, to but in a twist, it's Seth Rogen. <laughs> oh, we just turned it into a comedy. I actually, I would be good with like we send Ryan Reynolds because uh, again, the Hitman's Bodyguard was hilarious and I loved every second of it. So, um, I highly recommend. It's actually, on my list to watch this weekend oh, if dude, I get a it's chance to. So good, it's so good. I watched so many movies between Sunday and Monday. Yeah, what'd you watch? Yeah, uh, I say so many as in three. It's a I lot of movies. So that's, that's still six and, plus uh, hours. It's think of all the terabytes in your brain. Yeah. So what'd you watch? Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, I watched this one, and then I watched. Well, shit. Um, <laughs> okay. Is that a, is that a documentary? Oh, Training Day. Uh, Training Day. Oh, that's next week's movie. Yeah. yeah right. so I was feeling a little uh, Evil Denzel. Okay. And then uh, I watched. Uh, Spoiler. King of the Third One. I was pretty much unconscious for like a day and a half. So, all right. Was, I started yeah. watching today and then just ran out of time. So, I'm only about 35 minutes into it, but I started watching The Foreigner today, the Jackie Chan uh, oh. law abiding citizen. Where is that streaming? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see. Okay. The, the thing with the, the numbers. I've, uh, I've gone back and started over on West Wing. Oh, neat. To I try to make watch my, that. myself feel better about the uh, future of the United States. I want to watch. <laughs> I do want to watch West Wing. I, I heard it's great. I need to get into that. Um, and oddly enough, uh, since we did Wrath of Khan a few weeks ago, yeah. I kind of got into a Star Trek bend and mm-hmm. watched uh, Star Trek three, four, five, and six all in you know sequential order the next the next few days. Um, I'm just waiting to watch uh, seven, probably maybe tomorrow or Friday. So anyway, and then Star nice. Wars Rebels. I know we're kind of off topic with Chappie here, but Star Wars Rebels had their season series finale last week. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I talked. Chappie likes droids. Chappie likes droids. It was that was a really good show, and the ending was great. The season the series finale was actually really cool. Um, that that movie we watched turned me off. I could not. That different show, different thing. That's the Clone Wars. This is Star oh. Wars Rebels. This is produced by Disney. Um. Different characters, different time. This is post episode three, pre Rogue One. So like okay. the rebellion is real small. Like we actually see them introduce Mon Mothra and uh, the other general. Like we meet a very young, um, not in the Rebel Alliance yet. Um, what's his name? It's a trap guy. Um, oh, Akbar. Yeah, Akbar. Yeah, we meet Ak- Akbar. Ak- is that right? Akbar, yeah. Akbar, yeah. We meet him. Um, real young. Or Admiral Akbar. Yeah. Admiral Akbar, yeah. We meet him when he's just such and such. Akbar. Private Akbar. Yeah, well, not even private. Again, he just, he's not part of the Rebel Alliance. He invents the B Wing, right? The weird one that looks like a T. I don't know why they call it a B. It's called a bleed because it's a blade. 
but the one that looks like a T, one that fights, he invented mm-hmm. that. And so we see that episode where he invents it and the, the rebels use it. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of neat things. And then, but the, when you have it, just like Rogue One, right, you introduce these cool characters and you're like, now you have to explain why they're not in four, five, and six. They had to do that mm. too. Also in this, because this, this show for four seasons focuses on two Jedi and for, you know, the last 20 years, 30 years, we have been led to believe that Luke and Obi-Wan and Yoda were the only surviving Jedi, right? I mean, Luke had to be, was born, obviously, but, like, Obi-Wan and Yoda were the only surviving Jedi. The whole joke, well, not joke, but the whole thing was, like, when Obi-Wan says, you, were, you know, Anakin was supposed to bring balance to the Force, and he did by killing everyone except two Sith and two Jedi. Well, it's not true. There's actually, I know, a dozen or so other Jedi throughout the galaxy that are doing stuff. Um, so, anyway. My point is, it was a great show. You should watch it. And, a, and Ahsoka Tano shows up in it, too, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, I'm, uh, uh, my notes, uh, let me run through these. Uh, Hugh Jackman, I didn't know he was in this at all, and his haircut was awful. Um, it's like a new version of the mullet. It was, yeah, it was weird. Um, uh, yeah, I, about my seventh note down was, did Hugh Jackman just have the quote, I'll make this worse so they'll have to buy my mech face? I'm still confused by their... Like, did you guys... We all saw Batman Forever, right? That third one with Val Kilmer? Unfortunately. You know, like... No, I did not, actually. What? Uh, after after Batman Returns, and I started to see how they were going, I didn't watch them. You didn't, you, uh, Mister Comic Book. You say. Mr. Comic Book didn't watch Val Kilmer and Chris O'Donnell fight Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey. Uh, no, it was one of those. This looks real bad. It looks way because I saw the two dark ones. And these seemed not dark, and I was like, no, I don't think not. I want to watch yeah, this. They, they put nipples and, in the suit. Uh, I am I'm very familiar with scenes <laughs> from it because I've seen oh the nipple suit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very familiar with all those movies because I've seen tons of clips and tons of, of I think, terrible memes. I think so Batman forth. Forever is streaming. Um, we might have to yeah. fix this. No, uh, we don't have to fix this at all. I, I uh, Batman. <laughs> holy metal Batman. Yeah, he says that. Oh, it's on Netflix. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm going to put it right after this movie because this movie is really sad. So I'm going to put it right here. No, I'm going to move it to this movie here. And oh, that no, is we're, we're going to do it sooner than that. We're going to do it sooner. All right. Anyway, so my point is, what was my point? Shit. I don't even remember what my point was. Why was I talking about Batman Forever? This loss in data is really, uh, <laughs> this body by. Can I just read nipples? Why were you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> there was anyway, a reason for this. Yeah, what was I talking about? Let me go back to my notes. <laughs> uh, did Hugh Jackman just have the "I'll make it worse"? They'll have to buy my. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. So in the in the movie, <laughs> Jim Carrey is like this. You know, he's this crazy scientist guy, right? And he works for Wayne Enterprises. And, and, and it's a trope, right, where you have a job where you're supposed to invent shit. But the thing that you invent is so crazy in bananas that in real world, you would have either had your funding cut to do something else or they would have fired you. You're not just going to sit around. You're not just going to stay there. So to the point that they build. So, so I guess my point is, is that Hugh Jackman has this idea. Instead of a, a, a robot cop that's just a dude, let's make a big suit that you control with a pilot, okay? A drone. but that a, a huge walking, flying weapons platform drone. And then somebody at that company must have said, that's a good idea. Let's build it, right? You draw it up. They drew it. Engineers came in, and then they built it and armed it and ammoed it. And then they made somehow some other scientists made the technology to the neuro interface helmet to work into the robot. Again, such cutting edge technology, he too would not be in the cubicle farm with the rest <laughs> of the minions. Like especially back in the corner. 
Like in 2016, that that technology, we don't have that. That is so cutting edge technology that again, governments would be, you know, you mean we can fly our current drones with pilots just using their brains and a joystick without having to punch in a bunch of buttons? Mm -hmm. Like, by the way, there you go. The Russians get him, and the Americans get Chappy. Oh, that's actually a really good movie right there. Oh man, <laughs> no kidding, that's a cool movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then they have to fight in some like tournament uh, style thing. Oh, come on. Right? Wait, wasn't Hugh Grant already in a robot battle tournament? Yeah, Real Steel. It's movie. a boxing movie. Real Steel. Thank you. Are yeah, we gonna just let him go with Hugh Grant? We just I, do I'm that? Not, I don't care. It's, <laughs> it's actually become humorous to see what Sam comes up with. So, because um, now I'm never sure if it's like the real thing or I just assume Sam just doesn't know. His his hard drive is hmm. so full. That it's been full. So rewrote the uh, files. Yeah, that that didn't happen. It's like you there's know, a there's a blue screen of death over my eyes right now. <laughs> it's like corny. Whenever you have like like corrupted files, like I don't know how to do it on a PC, but on a Mac you can do what's called repair file permissions, and literally it just goes through and just like corrects, like moves the dot over or fixes this. Like that's what's happened to Sam. Only it's with names of movie actors. He just gets <laughs> he gets the face right, but the word is a little off. You know, so, um, and like the bio behind the actor is wrong. Like Catherine Zeta Jones being from Wales and not Mexico, yeah, things like that. Mexico. So, you know, just a little data corruption is all. So <laughs> it's not your fault, Sam. It's not your fault. Um, no. anyway, was anybody else happy that we got our, uh, by oh, the power of Grayskull. <laughs> I I was very very happy that happened. Actually, I thought I was waiting for it in the in the rest of the movie though. Yeah, I thought I, I, I yeah. kept thinking he was going to bring it back. I, I did too. Well, I thought that was going to be our Iron Giant moment, right? Where where the kid teaches the Iron Giant about Superman, and so the Iron Giant identifies with Superman. No, I don't want to be a Tomo. I want to be Superman. I thought Chappie was going to do that, like. Watch more cartoons of He-Man and decide, I want to be the good guy. That sounds cool. And so when the bad guy comes in and he's like, we're going to go do this heist, I know he kept, I can't do a heist because it's breaking the law. And my maker said, I made a promise. More like, no, I want to be like He-Man. I think that would have been kind of cool. And like he fashioned some kind of sword. That would have been pretty cool. Um, well, yeah, especially since he wouldn't do guns. Right. Like he has like a sword. secret powers. Do what? And he had fabulous secret powers, right? And then, and then he he found some sort of a, a lost kitten, and then uh, <laughs> you know raised it, brought that along with him. Or he built maybe, maybe built, with a dead kitten. That'd be even better. Oh. He built a robot kitten, mm. um, and then that's how. He, and then he put Patel's conscience into that, into knowing he's a pet cat. <laughs> I'm just teasing. That's me. Jesus. Um, what happens when a battery runs out? What do you mean? Cringer? Like the the oh. new robots, right? What happens like, when they they, oh, they bring them back in? They just they, they, they return to base, and when they get low, and they send a new one. Yeah, they just. What if they can't get to base? I'm sure they probably uh, have like fail safes in them, like any kind of like like our drones probably have. Oh, we're you know fuel is getting low, whatever the fuel is, battery, whatever fuel, and it has a fail safe. They, they left that open ended, whether or not her consciousness was on the flash drive. Yeah. You know, so we don't know. <laughs> no, we do because he you can do that backup. He hits a button and then she wakes up with a but face. Is it her? Yeah, she has a face with her eyes. I, I, I think that that answer that's more of an answer. Than I can draw else. a face on my thumb and put eyes on it, but does that mean it's alive? If you have enough money in Japan, you can buy dolls that are in the same shape as some people. I just think that. Well, you're right, but like I think Why I don't do you know that. <laughs> Well, I've researched <laughs> <laughs> dolls from Japan. You should, you could probably get I've also up. priced the yacht that I want to buy and the uh, okay, that's fair. The personal personal jet. Um, I've bookmarked them for later. Sure, <laughs> I have priced a uh, replica generally. Um, nice. So that's that's also fair. Well, and and <laughs> Sam, I think actually. Of all the kind of open ended stuff, I think we're led to because I think that's supposed to give us hope. Oh yeah, that, we're led to believe it is her. I, because, I'll give you that because Chappie's just... like building his family. Um, now the question is, does he stop there? 
You know, then is it like Rise of the Planet of the Apes kind of a thing where now it's like. What happens if he used that thumb drive in another robot? And another robot. Well, and another robot. Is it the same person? Well, that's, Lots of mummies. that's actually a thing. Is like in an alternate ending that's on the Blu-ray. Um, oh. When he when he um, when they upload to the spare robot, it accidentally uploads to all of the cop robots. I th- see. I actually thought that's where they were going. Yeah, he was going to do the thing, and then Chappie was going to be in two hundred different yeah. robots. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have basically Age of Ultron um, starting. So. Um, yeah, uh, I did write obligatory boobies. Um, oh, the, uh, the, 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 the porn. One, one random porn video that was playing. Yeah. Oh, God, sorry. Oh, I, I also wrote, I, I get that there are ro- the, all the robo cops are off, but there are still human cops. Like they went to riot mode real quick. That city. Mm-hmm. Um, that seems strange. Well, because they've been killing the cops, and the cops were being very, very effective, so, you know. Right. So I get that they've got normal, then they've got the robots patrolling the streets, but I still feel like they would still have cops. You just don't put cops, people, humans, in the the shootouts, right? I guess. But, I don't know. Maybe if you, if you still have them on the street, maybe they'll still get shot at. I don't know. Hmm. Um... um I also wrote, in fairness, a hospital would have probably saved Patel instead of taking him back to the lab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be different if he was shot in the chest. Here's they another... probably passed the hospital three times in the process. Right, they probably did. They probably yeah, passed three He's like, them. no, please stop. This is where I need to be. Right. No, Chappy, bring you home. Yeah, Chappy. Chappy, oh, Chappy fix. Chappy, Chappy fix. fix you, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I'm sure this really crazy and... Miscoozy, miscoozy. Uh, dangerous <laughs> technology will be a lot safer for you you know, because I watched Avatar, and they did it in Avatar with a tree, so I'm sure I can do it with a computer. Um, uh, I, was, I had another idea, but I can't remember what it is, so it doesn't matter. Um, all right, cool. Uh, you ready for some Clippy Clips? Let's do it. Chappy Chap. All right, Clippy Clips. Here we go. I didn't capture very many because I didn't really think there was a whole lot to... That's because if the audio was on, it would drive you crazy. <laughs> all right. Um... <laughs> Oh, I so this also kind of bothered me. It's a trope where like we get an intro that's like like in like um, Big Trouble in Little China. You leave Jack alone. He did so much for us and blah 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 blah. Right, and then we have to go watch the story. So we get this intro clip of these two guys, and then it says eighteen months earlier. I'm like, you just spoiled the movie in a movie directed by a dude who kills people. Like you just now told us that Chappie lives. So. You act, I'd actually, I actually didn't like that personally. Yeah, I'm saying like, in a movie where the main character can sometimes die, in his movies, you, you kind of spoiled something for me. So anyway, I kind of yeah, I, I thought that was a, one of those wasted scenes. I don't think we even needed that. We didn't. Nope. Just start with the newsreel, which is a trope. New, intro by newsreel, and just be on with it. You don't need it. We don't yeah. need these two dudes to tell us the moral implications of Chappie. We know that once we get to the end of the movie. Like, we've kind of come to this understanding of of that. But but then it also makes an assumption that after he's done the things we've seen on screen, there's more time that's passed, and we now know who he is, his name, and does he have legal rights and stuff like that. I don't know if maybe the movie's wanting us to have those conversations. I don't want to, but anyway. Here we go. Here's the clip. Historically, when we look at evolution, it's not surprising that uh, Chappie's left turn uh, happened. It's too early to tell how this is all going to play out. I didn't believe that this would happen in my lifetime, but but it is happening. So, all right. 18 months later. Um, What left turn? I mean... I don't know. The left turn meaning that he... Became human or became sentient? I don't know. When well, when I heard that though, I thought, okay, so he is given a consciousness, so to speak, and then does he take a left turn and just slaughter everybody? Right. <laughs> That's what I expected um, from that little clip. But I just thought it was useless. I thought it was, it was pointless it was, to it have was, that. It was dumb. I thought it was real dumb. Probably the worst decision of the movie, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Dumb cops. We are talking about urban crimes, eh? you know, muggings, carjackings, loitering. 
I'm talking all kinds of targets, sir, low to high. And I do believe that you need a weapons platform that can fire high explosive warheads with precision and reliability. Now, might I add, sir, all under the control of a human operator. I look, Ms. Bradley. And the police force is very happy with the scout. Very, very happy. We've just ordered new droids. Thank you. And we've been very successful at bringing down the crime rate. But this? No, we don't want this. I mean, look at it. It's overkill. It's expensive, it's big, and it's ugly. It's going to have to get a hell of a lot worse for us to even consider this. Uh, a, a wrong, just simply saying wrong answer would have been fine, but, you know. Well, you know, the problem here is uh, whenever you're dealing with an Australian, yeah, they never know what they're talking about, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know, it's just... Yeah, watch and, out. We'll get Ben Affleck back here. It just leads to my point of how did they, how did she even allow it to get to that point? Right? Like, unless the point was to build the platform for military purposes, that is a military craft, right? Mm -hmm. You would never sell that to cops. You wouldn't. It doesn't make any sense. That cop, that is dumb as he's leading us to, not dumb, but like, you want to make someone look like an asshole? Make him eat an apple. You want to make him look like a dumbass? Have him eat donuts. But like, what? Well, but but he's right. You would never put that in an urban setting. Give that sell it to the military. Sell it to the U.S. military. They'll buy millions of them. I'm sure of it. And then Donald Trump can go have his space war. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's something new that apparently happened while I wasn't paying attention. Oh, the that's space cool force. Today, I think. Yeah. yeah, space force. Yeah, that's cool. I like uh, it. Yeah. Um, I saw a lot of people go, yeah, NASA, it, it exists. Right, and then well, some other smart people were like, no, I actually do believe U.S. Air Force is actually in charge of that, that kind of thing. Well, <laughs> and then some other people were like, Iron Sky is right. So, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. so anyway. <laughs> we're going to have a moon base pretty soon. That's right. Uh, Personally, I'm thinking Iron Man suits. Like, that's what I want to see next. Just uh, Yeah, in our lifetime, have an Iron Man suit. I'm cool with that. Oh, yeah. That would be kind of neat. Speaking mm -hmm. of speaking Fiction. of Iron Man suits, Thor Ragnarok came out on video recently, so really, we have to yep. Go rewatch that. It's so good. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, Chappy. Chappy. I can go back to Chappy. That's your name, Chappy. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, his name is not Chappy. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's good. I like that, Chappy. Yeah. Chappy. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Chappy. Did you rooster yeah. tell that at the end? No, I didn't mean to. It's it's the next clip starting. Um, I, uh, well, uh, sorry. That th thank you, Sam, for uh, saying how annoying the voices were. Just hearing that made me oh. cringe. That's why I clipped it. Because <laughs> we're so bad. It is painful. Uh, it's going to kill you a little bit on the inside when you hear some of the trivia about her. Uh, here you go. Uh, number four, soul. It's special, like, like what's inside. That's what makes you different. See, it's who you really are. Inside, your soul. Okay, anyway, your soul. Chippy. Uh, Chippy goes, Mommy, like wires. Do you have wires in you? And he right. punches through the chest. <laughs> and pulls out instantly. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. Uh, this is the only time in the entire movie where I laughed. Now, I forgive you, bad man. There you go. He beats the hell out of Hugh Jackman. Actually kills him. In the trivia, it oh, says that he, he's dead? He's dead. He's dead? Yeah, he kills him. Um, I didn't know he killed him. Yeah. Uh -huh. I probably just beat him to, like... Close to the pole. No, he's yeah. there's supposedly like when when his body settles, it's supposed to kind of give us the hint that he dies, um, and Chappie doesn't realize that. But in the trivia, he died. He said he's dead. So holy oh, wow. crap! Right? Yeah. I mean, so he does murder someone. So he got one. All right. Yeah, he does technically Spots kill someone. Just went up a little bit. Um, we to go, Chappie. Um, so anyway, yeah. But yeah, I forgive you, bad man. I thought that was kind of funny. Here we go. And now for some more bad news. Ready? Excuse me. No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> Ladies. Trivia. During the GMA appearance, Hugh Jackman admitted that he had trouble keeping up with phrases from his home country. Quote, I found myself Googling Australian slang, he said. I just thought that was kind of funny. Because uh, he's not been home in a while. Ninja. 
was also he was he was skinny white dude what didn't wear a shirt. Ninja was Neil Blomkamp's first choice to play the lead in his previous feature Elysium. Really? Right. You went from that dude and said no, and that guy turned you down for reasons. He turned down the role reportedly because he didn't want his first screen to be an American accented character. So they went with Matt Damon instead. You went from that dude to Matt Damon? Like, Matt Damon. I just, <laughs> that kills me a little bit. That just drives me crazy. Uh, I already mentioned about the police uh, robots. The movie stars Ninja and Yolandi Visser are a controversial South African rap rave group, Die and Word. And Word, Word, which is Africans for The Answer. Were you saying N word? No. What? No. Ant <laughs> Ant word. Isn't that what it sounded like? Ant word. It's A N T W O O R N O R D. Ant word. No, I did not hear that, Sam. And uh, <laughs> you know, you know what makes person a hole when you say the N word because now I've said the word in my head. You know. <laughs> <laughs> But like the fact, so like at the end, when you hit the end credits and you hear that rap, that's them. That's the uh, two of them. They're a rap couple. They have a. I'm glad they died. They have a daughter together named Sixteen, though they're not married. Um, <gasps> She's an android. Right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. Nice little little Dragon Ball Z reference. Uh, anyway, that's all the <laughs> trivia I got. Um, there actually wasn't a whole lot of trivia to be to be had that was worth reading. I was, uh, I was curious why they used. Uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. That's what and the director does. I, I was just looking at the crime rate online, mm -hmm. and it really is one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Well, it said in the intro trivia, or not intro, but the, the trivia, not trivia, dang it, in the intro newsreel that like they were having like 300 murders a day. Yeah. Jeez, like, good Lord. Yeah, like this place, it says that they have a level of crime of 88.14%. Um, and like corruption and bribery is almost 90%. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. A violent crime, assault and armed robbery, 87%. I mean, this is, it's a dangerous place. So what you're saying is that we shouldn't go there for, for, you know, second honeymoon. I actually got a trip planned with my band kids to go. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> uh, but it's a good thing you're a teacher. You're going to be uh, getting, uh, armed anyway. So. Am I going this protection? Uh, sorry, didn't mean to. Well, as long as I don't shoot a kid in the neck, I think we're okay. Uh, uh, all right, uh, here's this. Excuse me while I whip this out. All right. Top three movies set in Africa, which is a big place. I know it's a continent, not a country. Um, and Central Africa is real. Uh -huh. I learned. Uh, thanks to this podcast, something else I learned. So we learn things on this show. Central Africa is yeah. a country. Um, I already knew that. You just denied it. I did. I yeah, that is true. Uh, you're probably right. I don't know. Maybe I learned it in my world geography class that I took in high school. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Um, so speaking of Central Africa, Andrew. Well, uh, okay. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure where that, where that transition is, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, well, I know that this is. Uh, animated, so it's not. Uh, it counts. It's fine. It's still you know, set it's there. It didn't have Africa, to be filmed there. The uh, honorable mention goes to the Lion King. Mm -hmm. Um, number three, Blood Diamond. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, number two, Captain Phillips, and that I guess technically takes place off the coast of Africa. Yeah, I've not seen that. It's such a great movie. I know, yeah, it is really good. I didn't, I didn't even think of that one, but yeah, that's a good. Oh, one. the one with the uh, Tom, uh, Tom Hanks. Yeah. Tom Hanks being Tom Hanks. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then that one, right? I know I did. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then number one, uh, a very recent film, Black Panther. Holy crap! How did I? Oh get my Black gosh! Panther? I can't believe I. Mm. I know, right? I freaking forget Black Panther. That's such, that was a good movie. I liked it. Yes, it was. Oh, uh, I feel 
I've got a feeling in my gut. Corn, did you finally see Black Panther? I did. Okay. Oh, that was my third movie. It was Black Panther. Oh, you watched that this weekend. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, did it, did it make sense why I asked the question that I asked now? I don't remember the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I threw out in the group chat asking, you know, who would win in a fight? Because in, in the movie, I don't know the comic. Again, I can only base what I know off of Marvel from the movie world. In the movie, he drinks a, 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 a essence of blue flower, and it makes him strong. <laughs> and I asked the question, while he's doped up on that, could he take out – what level of strength is he? Is he Captain America level strength? To which Corny said – Oh, uh, see, because I didn't know the movie at the time and what it actually gave me. I said, all I know is that uh, I had to go back to the comic book. I said, it's just the guy who's just in really good shape. Right. Um, and then part of the quote, quote, powers of the Black Panther is that you're able to, in, in more recent iterations of Black Panther, he can call upon previous Black Panthers like, hey, how do I beat this person? Kind of like the Avatar. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you do it this way. And so, uh, anyway, but... In terms of actual strength, he's not. I mean, he's not Captain America strong. And that's what I was wondering in this movie because we 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 see him fight Captain America in Cap Captain America three, and he's able to forcibly move Captain Shield. But again, yeah. Captain's also throwing his punches. He's not trying to hurt anyone, and we know that. Right. So I was just kind of curious. I mean, like. I also kind of, you know, like I kind of figure that Hulk is the strongest and then Thor, when he's not all super saiyan up, is probably a close second. And then somewhere significantly farther down would be Cap. Like, That'd of, be correct. Like I, of the, I, would, I would agree with that. Of the mortals, Cap would be like strongest. And then I kind of would feel like like like, he, like Black Panther would be like number two and then maybe Spider-Man at three and... Now Spider Man is actually much stronger than oh, including Spider Man. Spider Man is significantly stronger than Captain America really? will, will ever be. Even like oh, yeah, yeah. 16, 15 year old, the sixteen Spider-Man year old. Can, yeah, he, oh, yeah, he, he can lift yeah. several tons. I mean, I Remember, know he can he well, that freaking ship together, dude. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. He did basically pull a ship together and then lift probably a thousand pounds with a rubble. Oh, oh yeah, back. yeah. There's a actually. Um, well, I guess since we're doing the comic thing. Very quickly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> listeners. Um, so in the Superior Spider-Man co- uh, uh, comic series, mm-hmm. uh, when Doc Ock takes over Peter Parker's body, right. at one point in time, Doc Ock, acting as Spider-Man, trying to be a, a more superior Spider-Man, punches uh, one of the villains in the face. In the face. Oh, in the face. <laughs> and completely knocks off his jaw, to which Doc Ock goes, all these years I've been fighting him. He's always held back. I never knew how strong he was. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, oh, yeah. spider mans he's hella strong. I knew he was strong. Like, I, even in the cartoon that I watched, he could pick up a Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, I mean, technically, all the th- you know, things you see in the, the cartoons we always saw where he's, like, kind of picking up the back of a, a vehicle and it was, like, you know, just kind of lifting it up. Yeah. He, could th- he could throw a car. He could throw a car if he needed to. Cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, well, that's neat. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I know. All right, so, uh, Corny, your three movies. Okay, cool. So, uh, my number three, um, uh, I'm going to go with um, Sahara. Okay. <laughs> got, <laughs> I got you a coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go watch that. Don't listen to that episode uh, of Sahara, uh, listeners. I like it. I like it you, yeah, I like it, too. Uh, my number two. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Lion King. Okay. Because it's a that's just a damn good movie. Yeah. And my number one, I just happened to find it. Uh, I forgot to watch this. The Gods Must Be Crazy. Okay. Uh, we watched this in school, and it was freaking hilarious. Oh, okay. Um, I've heard of it. I've never seen it. Uh, it, it. You know what? If we could ever watch it, it'd be worth it. All right. Right on. Sam. All right. I've got uh, an honorable mention for two movies here. Um, I didn't go with uh, Lion King. I went with Madagascar because uh, I enjoyed that one uh, a lot for no, some reason. I didn't like it at all. Other. The only one of that series I liked is The Penguins of Madagascar. Yeah. Um, but then I've also got a Netflix original called Beast of No Nation. Okay. Um, which is incredible. Um, incredible movie. Um, my number three is Ghost in the Darkness. Cool. Which is a podcast uh, – 
you'll never get to hear, uh, folks. Right? Ghost of Darkness? I thought that one worked. That one's a good one. That one it one? was Starship yeah, Troopers. We watched, we watched, it. We watched for here. Yeah, but hmm. no, Starship Troopers is our lost episode. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Never Ghost, mind. Ghost of um, worked. Anyway, so Ghost of the Darkness. My number two is Last King of Scotland. Okay. Oh, yeah, like, the, that's in Africa? But yes, it is. And it is freaking. Oh, wit. Yeah. yeah. He, he won an Oscar for that, didn't he? Oh, I think so. Actually. Yeah. I think and then my number one is uh, Hotel Rwanda. All right. So I want the serious side of things, I guess. Uh, all right. Those were legitimately great films. I didn't put any of those on mine. Um, my honorable mention is Machine Gun Preacher. Uh, <laughs> nice. I really like that movie. It's actually interesting. And it's a cool story. Um, it, it's up. Uh, number three, Congo. Oh, well, God. Seriously? It, it's a dumb movie, but I like it. It's just a, it's a dumb movie, but it's a, it's got a weird place Stop in my heart. Stop my sesame, sesame cake. cake. Yeah. Stop actually, eating my sesame cake. Yeah, I have uh, some of those nearby, actually. Yeah. Stop eating my sesame cake. Yeah, I got that one right <laughs> nearby. So, um, nice. anyway. Oh, and speaking of Sahara, um, you know, uh, Rudy! I shot a guy with a flare gun. Cool. <laughs> I say that line in when I play Battlefield 1, whenever I kill a guy with a flare gun, I, I, I say that line, but no one else gets it. But I'll, I'll literally be like, hey, I shot a guy with a flare gun. Cool. And uh, no, one, no, one cares. no one cares. Um. Anyway, and my number two, Ghost and the Darkness. Uh, yes. The Lion movie. And my number one, Sahara. <laughs> so, oh, that movie. It's oh man, yeah. Well, I, I want to redo my uh, my. Oh, you can, yeah. <laughs> Next time, you go. That took you so long. What? Hey guys, I stopped for coffee. You get a receipt? Yeah, I got a receipt, and I got you one too. You're the yeah. best. Yeah, you know what? I'll even get you the money from Sander. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to play the clip. What were you gonna do, Andrew? You're gonna you're gonna change yours up. Yeah, I just thought about this while we were sitting here. All right. um, coming to America. Oh, sure. But isn't that, I, so isn't that I, I mostly filmed that here? One, but most of it's over in New York, right? Yeah, yeah. and I was like, but I don't know if that's going to... a few scenes. <laughs> but yeah, oh no, I... <laughs> that was going to be my number one. I thought, I can't use this one. Uh, all right, here we go. Um... Wait, what's supposed to happen? Out of 10, give this movie a 1 or 10 or some number in between. Andrew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's about where I am, oh. score-wise. Is a, eh. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it, there were some things that I liked. There were some things that bothered me, some things that I just didn't like. Um, and not to mention bad haircuts and... and uh, Nasally pitched voices. Oh, uh, chappy wappy. Yeah. So I'm gonna go pretty low on this. Actually, maybe uh, four point two. Okay. Out of ten. All right. So you like this just barely over the circle? Did I give the circle that low? You gave it a four. Oh no. Yeah, you didn't like the circle. I, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Corny. <laughs> All right. Uh, I uh, I did like this maybe a little more than the circle. Um, so I'm going to give it, I think I gave it a six last time, right? Correct. I'm going to give this a 6.24 chaps my hide. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sam. Um, goodness. Uh, if, you know, when you have to describe a movie and say you would have liked it better on mute, um, you know, something's a little bit off in it. So, um, I'm going to have to say, uh, probably a 5.4 out of 10, um, just because of the annoying voices. And I think it, uh, it meandered a bit. It needed uh, to be a little more crisp, um, in direction, so all right. He was crisp. Stick it to it. Uh, the dude who got blown up. Well, that's true. Yeah. 
and the oh, robot. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm going to give it... I'm just going to give it a plain five shirtless dudes out of ten. Um, That's a little, little strange. But cool. Um, I just, it was... It was fine. I mean, I'm I'm giving it some credit on the on the behalf of the director because I liked District Nine and Elysium. Um, I mean, I have an Elysium T-shirt that I got for free from a promotional, but it doesn't matter. So, nice. um, uh oh, corny. Uh, yeah. Sorry, the 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 averages is not doing its math. Um, oh. If you can fix that, please. Uh, Let you do that. Yeah, Let me do the thing. Thank you. Um, it was I fine. It, I, you know, there were some things that we've we've kind of talked about. There's some. Th- I mean, the the, fix. The, fix. the motion cap for Cappy was great. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. yeah. We need to talk about that. Like like the technology. Like there were scenes where uh, some of the movement. You're like, yeah, that's motion cap. But there's sometimes I'm thinking that's got to be a puppet. That's got to be like when they're in bed together. That felt like a real puppet, you know, because she touches it. And yeah. and uses the contours of his chest, so I think that that was a I mean maybe not a puppet. It could have been a, an actual working like robot, you know, like like the head and the ears and the eyes were like controlled by you know a computer off screen, and like maybe, Voltron. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I I thought that was all actually really great. So um, the, the movie has a lot to like. It really does. Um, it just. There was something missing for for I think us all of us, and I don't really know yeah. like because not not one of us said the same thing that like we all really felt that it was missing, which is weird, because uh, usually we're all like oh yeah it was definitely missing this thing, and like one guy like one of you said like oh I would have liked it if it done this and someone else said it would have been better if it done that and so I think that's interesting that we all kind of didn't get something out of this film so. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I, what I, but I wouldn't say it was awful and I, I don't want my two hours back. I'm glad I watched it. Um, I just don't want to watch it again, but that's fine. So, um, and my son just walked in the room. Um, hey, Jack. hey bud, you okay? What? Yeah, you're on the podcast. Yeah, you're 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 being heard to dozens and dozens of people, or right. two, um, <laughs> or the one, or the one, and I'm, and I'm counting us. Yeah, you're you're counting. Wait, hey, you want to say hi, buddy? <laughs> hey, Hello, say, Master Declan. Hey, Sam, Chad, or not Chad, Andrew, and Corey. Sorry. <laughs> Stop reading your script. They Sean. can't. They can't hear you. Or you, yeah, he can't hear you. All right, go back in bed, and I'll get you some some medicine. Okay. Okay. Oh, you, you, you're you going to snuggle on me while I do the outro? Okay. Um, so I'm going to do the outro with my son in my arms. Um, and it's in good, the arms it's a good... of a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that might be the name of the episode. Um, <laughs> in the arms of a show. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish he was hearing all that. Uh, he wouldn't find it fun. Um, all right. Anyway, that's our show. Thank you guys so much for listening. It's been a lot of fun. Um, even though we're nearing the hour 40 minute mark, I'm pretty sure we only spent about an hour on the actual movie, um, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, so visit our website, cheapseatreviews.com, um, where you've got links to our old shows and things like that. Facebook.com slash cheapseatreviews. Twitter is at, at cheapseatreviews. Please send us your emails, cheapseatreviews.com. Um, do that be, that'd just be super if you could do that. Uh, I, anchor, I actually did an anchor post last week, and I'll do another one uh, for my review of The Foreigner when I finish watching it. So uh, there you go. Something to look Did forward to. Over the wall? Do I, I don't know yet. He's, uh, well, no, he's in, in London, so oh. they don't have walls there. Uh, just rivers and tea and bad teeth. I'm just teasing London, or English listener. I'm just teasing. We love you. I really um, do think they drink tea. They do drink tea. Yes, I do know that. That's a thing. Um, don't want to don't want to make angry our only uh, English uh, British listener. So uh, anyway, that's gonna do it for us. So on behalf Thank of uh, Corny, Sam, and Andrew, and my son Declan here, uh, this is Sean saying thank you so much for listening and good night.